What's up, everybody? It's your favorite little leader's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the DX9 Legends Class Optimus Prime from their War and Pocket line named Commander Dutch. I got a buddy of mine named Dutch. I should give him a call. Call Dutch. Oh, yeah. So I wanted to make sure my seatbelt was on. <laughs> no worries. What's up, buddy? You are live right now on a review. Okay. And I wanted to ask you a question. I just got a third-party Optimus Prime in. You're familiar okay. with you're familiar with Optimus, right? Yeah. And you know they can't use the proper names because of copyrights and all that kind of stuff. Y yeah. Uh, his name is Commander Dutch. Okay. How does it make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel a little awkward, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. It's kind of a weird, odd feeling. Not feeling it? Not entirely, unless I knew something behind it of why it was named that. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure why it's named that either. It doesn't but make a whole... But if you're just calling it Commander Dutch, then <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's a little odd to me. It is a little strange. All right, well, you, uh, you enjoy playing with Commander Dutch, and we'll catch up because I'm off for a little while. Nice. Enjoy the vacay. Bye, Later. So, there it is. He feels a little awkward about it. Which I suppose I get. Now, this is on loan to me from Robert D. Robert D included a little gift with this. Let me back out the camera a bit. This display stand. Uh, he, m like most of my viewers, or not most, that's not really fair. A portion of my viewers must also think I'm an idiot because he gave me instructions on how this works. Step one, fold down. Okay, got it. Step two, fold out. Alrighty. Okay. And then I have a little backdrop. It's a complimentary backdrop for the trash formers uh, with my little skull face in there. So what a nice little treat. I'm not sure if it's in regard to this or another PC let me hold that we'll be looking at next week, but either way he included it. I figured it was uh, worthwhile. I will say, I think maybe he misspelled it and then tried to squeeze that E in, but I don't need to be reviewing his stand. Let's continue. Let's get that out of the way. He does come with two accessories. Let's look at them first. So he comes with his signature blaster, which is nicely done. It actually has some paint inside it, some gunmetal paint, which looks great. Sculpt looks good, little small piece there. I always uh, am kind of impressed when they do little smaller pieces on, on very small accessories. It ends up making the whole piece look more detailed and sort of special, but uh, also you want to be careful because it is a small piece. He holds his gun just fine. The gun can store on these pegs here. It's not the best connection in the world, but it will stay. And he also comes with his signature battle axe that he used in that episode that now I feel like every prime must include for some reason, regardless of any other scenario, but it's nice enough to have. And the axe will fit on his fist just fine. The axe they have in the instructions just to sort of sit in there. It'll also sit in there when you're putting it back into trailer mode if you want to store it, but it's going to rattle around and stuff, which is a bit of a bummer that they didn't sculpt something in to just kind of keep it sorted out, but whatever. When it comes to the trailer itself, you have these stabilizers that come out. They don't quite sit flush with the ground. Um, so that's a little strange and I don't see any other piece that juts out, but um, it could be possible I'm doing something wrong. And then you also had these stabilizers which work a lot better, but it is a bit of a trick to get them out. But once you have them out, then it'll sit with no problem. In the back, the doors do open. However, I don't think you'll be able to fit a figure or a car in there or something. Maybe a headmaster could go in there, but it is a very small sort of opening, you know, to give you a point of reference. And then you have these pieces that also come out. I've already loosened the connection because it's it's very tricky to kind of get it out. And then they're on these sliders, which can be a little frustrating because you see how there's like that movement and the sliders kind of have to be completely parallel in order to slide in easily in and out. So just keep all of that in mind and use some caution and some common sense. This does open. Make sure your doors aren't open all the way or it won't open because it gets jammed up down here at the bumper. So you have this thing which we've kind of come to expect from Optimus Prime trailers. It comes up on two hinges and then the top piece is on a ball peg so you can get some pretty decent articulation out of it. So that's nice. You have this armature here that's on a ball peg and then a hinge or a swivel here really. And then you have this targeting system. Now, this thing here is a translucent plastic so use caution. It's hard to get it straight up in the air, so to speak. So what I, I have recommend with it is to rotate it down and then rotate it all the way around back the other way and that should help you with clearance issues because it's not really, um, uh, there's not really a whole lot of allotment to, to move it around. Then it has the transparent uh, windshield. <laughs> I don't know, what am I, I'm thinking of a word, I can't think of it, but um, 
it's stationary, it doesn't open or anything. But all in all, I think it's a pretty decent trailer, uh, kind of in representation as far as what we kind of come to expect from Optimus Prime trailer, so no issues from me. As for the truck mode, it does look the part. It, it doesn't roll quite well, um, to be honest with you, and there are some issues with the wheels on this thing in general. Like, these barely move. It's tolerances, and, and we've kind of talked about that in the past with these DX9 uh, pieces, especially the worn pocket pieces that they, they tend to suffer for some tolerance issues. Unique toys will often have the same issues, just not as much with their Legends line and more with their regular stuff. But yeah, so the trailer looks nice. We have the white and blue paint on it. And it, actually, this whole thing looks like it has a gunmetal finish, which is nice. With little silver details on the wheels, little silver details on the truck, the smokestacks, etc. And then we have the blue tinted windows, which look good. It's a little bit of a bummer that we don't get the side window, but, you know, it's because of uh, the engineering and such. And we have some red paint, some silver paint, some yellow paint on there. So all in all, it's a pretty impressive piece in terms of scale and detailings. Functionally, like I said, it, it doesn't quite perform the way you'd want it to but I think for display purposes or photography or anything like that you'd get everything you need out of it now here's where we are going to run into a lot of issues transformation and it's just a matter of tolerances so we're gonna go step by step and in the instructions they have you pull these side panels out what tends to happen is the whole leg comes off the socket but we'll see if we can't get it yep it just did so there so Kind of a bummer, and I'll reconnect the leg. Let's see if we have any better luck on the other side. Nope, came right off. So we use our spudger. Popped it out, open it up, and I'll reconnect the leg. Then we're gonna move our arms away from the cab, and then move our shoulders around like the old G1. Open up our bumper. Then we're gonna flip open the chest, spin it around, and flip it back, which is pretty cool. Flip the head up, turn the head around. Pull up the backpack, spin your bumper pieces around 180 degrees, and fold them up. And you're gonna wanna do that on both sides. Flip the remaining silver pieces up against his back. Connect his abdomen to his pelvis. And underneath, rotate the hips 180 degrees. Extend the legs, times two. You might find that the legs pop off the ball pegs again. Just, and the wheel popped off, which I was warned might happen. But let's see if we can't extend the leg now. There we go. Reconnect your wheel and reconnect your leg. Flip your side panels back down, your feet up, your hands out, which are a little bit of a tolerance issue as well, and you'll find that they're that on both sides. I'll clean them up, we'll take a look at them. So let's talk about them. The head is on a ball peg, the peg fits down into the socket of the, the, the neck, which is an interesting choice. I don't think it's wrong though, and as a result you get a good bit up and down, and the swivel, and I love the sculpt of the head and the little ears and such. Do be careful, they are small, but I love the sculpt. The silver paint uh, inside the crest there and on the face and mouth plate, and then blue eyes, which are painted on, which also look nice. And you would think it was a uh, light piping system, but they painted it, and it looks much better for it. For the chest, we do have a little bit of matrix vision, which is pretty sweet. Like they, this is a very complicated sort of figure to talk about, and we'll get to it in final thoughts. But we have the turquoise metallic paint, the orange paint, and the and the silver paint there, and then you can close that back up with the blue translucent on the faux windshield, and then the yellow paint added on. All looks good. We have the gray paint, I think. Yep, gray paint added on, and then silver paint added on. You don't get a proper waist swivel, but you do get it below at the pelvis, which I think is fine, except for the fact that you have to flip this up. This is the same problem that we're going to run into with that new third party uh, Masterpiece Optimus, the Magic Square, I believe, where you're going to have to flip this up in order to pose it. And then once it flips down, it's never going to look right, which is a problem. It's a problem like these need to be independent so we can all move around the leg. Then you have the yellow paint on there, which looks great. Yellow paint's a hard one to do, and they pulled it off fantastically. So the shoulders, quite nice as well. You got ball pegs that get you out to there, and the 360 around, plus they're on hinges, so you get a little bit of a butterfly forward and back. No issues whatsoever. You get a bicep swivel and a double hinged elbow, getting you the full run, plus the swivel. You have yellow paint on there, which is also done well. Whatever they're doing for their yellow paint, they need to share that information with the rest of the class because they're doing it better than anyone else. And then the wrists don't have a swivel, but they do have a little bit of a hinge. I think that's good enough. Same for the other side, obviously. 
And then we have the hips, which are on T-jointed ball pegs. They're not tolerance very well, as you saw, they pop off a ton, but you do get out to there for pretty much the full Van Dam and forward to the to there and then back so we're not giving them the full monty but it's still pretty good i don't think it'll limit you in any way whatsoever and then you have the thigh swivel built around you see there's the thigh swivel there's the mushroom cap for the thigh swivel and it's built around the ball peg but the joint is so tight that it, it tends to pop the ball peg off because it's it's not a deep socket for it so that's a bit of a bummer and then we have a knee hinge that gets you just about 90 degrees maybe a little shy but i think it's worth giving it to them definitely and then we have uh, an ankle tilt down, nothing up, so that sucks, but it's a Legends class figure, it's more than we need, and a rocker, a really, really well done rocker, and a proper old school rocker, so that works extremely well, back of the figure cleans up well, it's just, it's so interesting, because there's, there's things that are done so well, and they're just juxtaposed next to things that aren't done as well, so let's do some size comparisons. There he is with the Hasbro Legend, so I think that's a pretty good scale, and then this Warbitron thing, it's just the only other thing I had handy, which doesn't really fit with anything, to be honest, but just wanted to give you one other point of reference, because it's all I had. Final thoughts wise, the issues here are tolerance issues, which is a plague that DX9 has a hard time getting out from under when it comes to their Legends class figures. The legs, the sockets for the ball pegs aren't quite right. The knees are tensioned very tightly to the lower leg, which causes an issue in bending the knee. It's hard to get the hands out. It's hard to get the sliders out on the trailer. So all of those things really get in the way of enjoying the figure as a toy. Now, to my understanding, DX9 is aware of it. They've kind of made a public statement about it. I think it was done through Google Translate, so, you know, that's a dice roll in and of itself. But saying how they expect, I believe, future runs to have worked out the kinks here, which is cool, unless you bought this one. <laughs> now, the other issues I have with it are the pelvis flap. That's going to be an issue anytime you design a figure this way. It's always going to look a little weird. But that's really it. But unfortunately, it's enough. Now, the positives are also great. The articulation works fairly well across the board. The accessories all make sense. This axe does plug into his hand. It doesn't just sit there with tension. I'm not sure if I mentioned that has tons of pain on it to be a legends figure it has more pain on it than some of the masterpiece stuff we get from some of these companies the added gimmick of the matrix completely unexpected the sculpt is beautiful so it really does a lot of things extremely well so here's the thing at the end of the day i can't recommend this release of it but i definitely would recommend the re-release of it at least worth giving it a shot and if they're right or accurate about fixing the issues that kind of plague this thing i think you'll be more than happy but as it is there's just enough here to make it unenjoyable. It hasn't been my week for toys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.